the man is about to be a break we can Starting to the top left of the map, we currently see the channel player for KT Rollster. He's starting in red. He's down the game. His ideas. KT Flash. KT Flash down one game against his Protoss opponent. On Whirlwind, the second map at the bottom left, we have him in blue starting for NS Hossa. It is. NS Hosso Gray. Courageous fellow. Yeah, an unbeliever. And yeah, he doesn't care. That's this New Zealand band, Hunters and Collectors. That's actually pretty awesome. They have a couple of really good songs, and one of them is has a line in there about unbelievers. And every single time I see him play right now against Flash, it just pops up in my head. I was playing the entire second half of the last game. I know it's a little bit weird and out of context. I have you send you a link later. They're really good. Guys, if you don't know those um, guys, check them out. I feel they have probably a couple of videos on YouTube. Hunters and Collectors, pretty cool rock band. Yeah, for sure. Um, while we're talking first. about music, and we have the CC first, so it's not going to be any kind of early game aggression. I talked about this in the past, but it's already like, I feel uh, six or seven months since I did so. If you are really out for good hip hop, and we talk always a little bit about the music here at the GSL because, well, BK is doing such a great job with all the uh, songs, but if you are out for really, really good hip hop, not this gangster hip hop, but really good stuff, there's a band from Australia, from Adelaide, Hilltop Hoods. Definitely check out their songs on YouTube. You won't regret it. They are amazing. They are, in my opinion, the best hip-hop band in the entire world. Check them out. If you like the songs, send me a tweet and uh, let me know because I feel they are just the best guys out there. And also, while we are just waiting for those two to unfold their build orders, make sure that you follow the two of us on Twitter, at ProxyWolf, at Carlo. We would definitely appreciate yeah, the support. It. If you haven't followed me yet, just point at you. <laughs> you don't, you wanna, don't you want to know all my thoughts about Pro Gamer's hair and also see all my pictures of Soul? I knew you would do that. And, <laughs> uh, you know that probably like 30 people are going to unfollow you now? That's fine. <laughs> if they don't want to know what I have to say, then why are they following me? Well, we have now the expansion for Brave, so currently things are starting a little bit normal in this game. Flash was a bit more aggressive with this build. He, well, aggressive in a way that he focused on his economy, more greedy. But yeah, not a lot of action in the early game on a map like Whirlwind. That was a Venus probe trap, by the way, at Flash's base. He was trying to get the probe to come in, he was tempting him. The probe wanted to go in and he was like, ah, if I go in there, I'm not going to see anything, I'm just going to get trapped in there and die. He's got two barracks with CZ first, I don't need to go in there. But Flash didn't raise the depot, he was like, come on in, probe, it's fine. <laughs> There's a third CC. This is very flashlight. Very similar to what we saw in the last game. And you know, his build was good. He had a good build against what Brave did. His problem was really just a misread because Brave tried to trick him. Yeah. And was successful. Definitely, that was the reason. Brave is... I wonder if we'll see him try in this series a timing attack to punish Flash because Flash likes to take risks like this. And the coach, of course, talked to Brave, so he will have told him about the opening of Flash in the last game. But now we have two additional gateways, not heading straight into the robotics. He's completely fine with just getting the gateways out in case there's some early aggression. But he, of course, needs the robotic, needs to know what's coming up, unless he's going for a big timing attack here. Yeah. No robo just yet, but he will have enough resources very soon. He's getting that sentry first. And he's chrono boosting his probe production, getting as many probes out as possible, indicating he does not want to hit a timing attack. There's the robotics going down back at home as well. And Flash is just transitioning normally here, adding his additional barracks. We'll add his factory very soon, as well as tech labs to get his stem and combat shield research so we can start Marauder production as well. So many people expect Flash to do as well as he did in StarCraft 1, giving a little bit more time. He also had a, he already had a lot of time to prepare for StarCraft 2, but of course he's still lacking behind if you compare it to the experience that the ESF players had in the past two years. But still, he's doing so well, especially his performance at MLG is of course outstanding. He didn't uh, win the tournament, but still he did pretty well. I think he ended up third, right? Yeah. Third, there's, fourth place. There's a lot of pressure on you when you are in this position. Yeah. Like, you have to live up to your fans' expectations. You see this with very few pro gamers 
But there are some out there who search for Zergon 1 Zergon 2 early, like Nada, July Zergon Boxer, for example. There's just this expectation that looms around you. And then you have newer idols like Flash who have a massive expectation, not only overseas fans, but more so, much more so in Korea. Yeah. Two additional bunkers for Flash. He's really a little bit afraid that some kind of timing is coming his way. He wants to play super safe here. And I feel like sacrificing those minerals is something that he can definitely do. In this case, it's not going to really matter because Brave is not trying to do the time. He's actually supply blocked right now. Heavily supply blocked. Yeah, they both are, in fact. Uh, Flash finishes his depot. Brave waiting a little bit longer here. No call down pylon. That would be interesting, though. Yeah, we saw that earlier. Who did that? One Terran player the day. We had so many matches already. Today, uh, one of our Terran players, I Can't forget which one it was, that. but he had to That's call down supply crazy. because he lost so many depots to an early Protoss attack. I think he used three call down supplies. It was Bjorn. I think it was Bjorn. Yeah, actually, that's right. Uh, In game number one, he got hit with an early proxy immortal rush. Now, Metamags are coming out here for Flash. This becomes his first ability to become aggressive. He will have the ability to drop to the main base, run in at the third, and also come in at the natural at the same time on this map. The third base is so open. We have the Twilight Council for Flash, uh, sorry, for Brave again, and uh, this time he didn't get hallucination, right? At least not yet. Yeah, he's probably he probably thinks like, okay, this is not going to work twice. Yeah, it's definitely not something you want to do twice. <laughs> twice. I mean, you could try it, but it's actually the same thought that a lot of players had at WCS Global Finals. I talked to them quite a bit when this first occurred, and they said it's cute. It's definitely something that can work, but they all felt that at some point the uh, Protoss opponent will get a little bit smarter, like looking at the army and actually trying to think about how much that all costs and if that's actually possible at this point in time. So we might see that occasionally popping up a little bit more often than in the last few months, but I don't really feel it's going to be a standard in the game because at some point it's going to be a little bit too transparent. You know, um do you remember there's a few games I'll mention right now that you'll probably remember? Obviously, Seed and GSTL comes to mind with Hallucination, but yeah. then you have um, Hawk vs. Idra, the Void Ray Hallucination game. Yeah, <laughs> we left also instantly. Have, <laughs> you have Adele Scott and uh, some other pros. Huck was doing this a little bit as well. In this matchup, in particular, rather than doing uh, Colossi, just hallucinating Void Rays to bug out the Vikings, making it so that you have to target. That kind of fell out of style because most people target anyways. But if you compare these games from um, back of old, it's actually quite nice that we have players like Huck and Idra still, uh, still around. Even though these days Idra is a lot more successful than Huck. Yeah, for sure. It, these people have not really disappeared. Oh. I mean, if you look at general, he's retired, yeah. but... Man, yeah, Idra did so well at WCS Global Finals. It was really impressive. It was a little bit unfortunate that he was up against the Rain in the round of 16, but he took one map of the Caspar player. Yeah. Three bases now for both of these guys here, and Flash with his better macro management is getting a little bit of a lead here, not only in upgrades, but also in the overall supply. So uh, Brave has to be really careful with how he approaches this last game. It was a bit tricky and it worked in its favor, but now Flash is doing everything right. He's hitting the timings, keeping his money low, his resources, doing a great job here in this game. Scan here, Chess. Looks like barely outside of the vision range of that observer because he did not kill it. These stalkers want to get in here and snipe a Viking and they will. Pretty nice control by Brave. Flash has a massive supply lead right now. That third base really has paid off for him. He's got an army supply lead as well. I don't know if he has enough for this Colossus though. The one on the side is doing a ton of damage as well. Flash is dropping in supply like mad. Maybe a little bit overextending himself here to the left side. A Colossus has been taken down by the small bio force that he sent to the left. But yeah, he lost his supply advantage. Darted in and tried to win the game. But now he's heading straight into the Ghost Academy. This attack was not as successful as he hoped. But he still has a lead in the game. Yeah, they were both on even upgrades. Flash did go before 2-2 was done. So even though he's ahead in the research of the upgrades, the actual upgrades themselves were even at that point. Charge is on the way a little bit later here for Brave. And these medevacs are spotted, in fact, by Zealots right now. You know, if Flash took down both of those Colossi, it would have been worth it, I feel. But he only killed one yeah. of them. And he lost his Vikings, most of them, as well during that fight. That was definitely not a good trade for him, but it could have been. Yeah. We have Storm now halfway done, and plus two, plus two, four flash nearly completed, whereas Brave just started his own upgrades. So we need to figure out a look here. Plus one attack started for the Vikings. He's still trying to hunt down those zealots, but yeah. they're a little bit too fast. Brave has to know that there's somewhere in this game there are still two medivacs headed towards this position. 
Uh, right now, he's got great coverage on the map. He's got units everywhere. So many observers. He sees them. He has four observers on the map. He can see everything, basically. Flash scans ahead. Is he really able to get these medivacs in there? Ah, uh, there are the stalkers. That's a not enough stalkers. No, not quite. He's more like Colossus back. The targeting of the Colossus actually will be enough to save him here. And a great snipe on the medivac. Second medivac gets away, but... Uh oh is he able to take on this Colossus? No, just not. Yeah, just barely not. That was a close call, though. Plus two, plus two done for Flash. He doesn't hit the plus three attack yeah. and armor upgrades as well as he did in the last game. Yeah, you're right. And Brave is actually about to catch up with him here. Plus two attack finishing just now. Plus three uh, the attack has been started for Flash. The armor upgrade is a little bit uh, too expensive. Ah, oh, a great flank. An amazing flank. This is like the best position ever for him. Yeah, Brave a little bit looking away at that moment. And now he's in a lot of trouble trying to warp in as many units as he can. He might lose the game here. He needs to get a great storm. And so far it's impossible. Plus two armor is almost up in his third base. It's completely exposed. And he loses the Colossus. You're right. Flash could easily take this game. All his units so low on hit points. But it doesn't matter because they still have that DPS. He takes down this third base. Actually, he could, but he focuses on the Zealots first. Now he can take care of the rest of his opponent's army. There are a few Zealots at the top right doing damage, but Flash is ahead with 170. So fight against 105. Yep, the Flash third is down. Losing a lot of units here. Yeah, to say the least. I mean, this guy is suddenly... He has twice the amount of supply yeah. compared to his opponent, and most of the really heavy tech units for Brave are gone. Yeah, Brave is losing probes, now he's going to fight with them. Flash will be held off for a little bit longer, but this Zealot Warp in is not going to be enough for the next wave of units coming across the map. It's 72 Harvesters to 42, and that alone tells a story, because Flash hasn't killed him yet, but he has an economy, and Brave really just does not. Exactly, and also those upgrades, well the armor upgrade hasn't been started yet, they aren't even upgrades, but the attack upgrade will be finished a lot faster. We still have so many units, yeah, this is, it's just an overwhelming force for Flash, this is something that Brave can't contest. No, absolutely not. GG! Flash ties the series up in this best of three, the last one for the day. We are heading into a third match between Flash and Brave. It's going to be interesting to see what Brave's idea is if he's trying to head for some kind of two base timing, one base timing this time. The latter one is actually something that I seriously doubt. What is he eating there? Uh, I can't actually tell. What was that? Wolf, steroids and esports, they are real. <laughs> I think it was some candy or something. I'm not yeah, sure though. I think it was chocolate. It was kind of a weird chocolate, but it... It's probably just melted chocolate. It's pretty hot in the studio today. It is pretty warm. They cranked up the heating. I want to make sure no one's cold. You know, as Professor Lupin once said about chocolate, eat this, you'll feel better. Yeah, that's probably what he does now. And it's true. If you eat chocolate, you feel better. It's true. Same is true for ice cream. It's a comfort food, man. Yeah. Whether it's because you've got uh, dementors staring you down and you're freaking out and you're not... You're really insecure because you're actually just 13 years old and you're in a school about wizardry that you didn't even know you were a wizard. And yeah. people are tracking you trying to save the world, but you're like the most famous person. But, but you feel eat chocolate and you feel a little better, it's okay. You don't need Dementors to eat chocolate and ice cream. Well, for me, even if I saw a Dementor, I wouldn't want to eat ice cream. Yeah, but you are weird, that's different. Listen, I'd rather stare a Dementor in the face than eat ice cream at this point. I don't like it. No. You know, actually, if I see a Dementor, if I see a bugger, it's going to turn into ice cream and I run away so fast. <laughs> That's a bug. It's turning into me, man. It's got fruit in it, too. It's like ice cream with peaches on it. I'm like, oh, disgusting. I run out so fast. Well, game two is now about to be, sorry, game three is about to be yep, started. Yeah, this is the deciding match. Who's staying in code A? On Belgia Vestige, pronounced the British style because we have the Hogwarts clothes on today. Yes. An American would be Westage. Pull over the radio and back up in the rage.